Hello everyone, welcome back to Axangel RC. Been a while since I've uploaded a video, so let's dive right into it. In this and a few following videos, I would make a slight detraction from the usual FPV and autopilot based content because I do feel like it has taken over my channel a bit too much and it was starting to get a bit monotonous at some point, so I was really looking forward to doing some good old line of sight flying without any FPV or autopilots, and brush the dust off of my manual flying skills for a bit since they've certainly gone dormant over the past few years. So what we have here today is a Taft Hobby Dornier DL27 scale plane with a wingspan of 1.6 meters, so not a small bird at all. I had this thing sitting in a box for god knows how long, got it from Banggood, but they seem to not be selling it anymore, as the listing only says arrival notice, which is pretty much never good if you're waiting to order one. It regrettably came with no electronics other than a single red LED pre-installed in the rudder. Both wings have beds and wiring channels for LEDs but none were provided with the plane and I opted out of looking for such to install. What was awesome though was that the plane came with plastic hinges on all control surfaces, wiring channels and proper plastic mounts for the servos so you wouldn't have to glue them in. Only drawback was that the space around the servos was not really thought out well, so all wiring that had to pass around them from other servos or gear required that foam be dug out, but at least you could do that underneath the servo so it is not visible once you close those boxes up. Also, it has been a while since I've dealt with a plane which has its tail servos inside the fuselage, right under the wing as opposed to back at the tail, but since this is not an FPV model and was not designed with that in mind, and also given where the battery is supposed to be, the goal here was not to move as much weight to the tail as possible, so as to make room and to make it balance friendly to adding larger batteries and FPV gear to the front. Those tail control rods do need some stiffing up, but all in good time. Right now the most annoying part of this plane are the control surfaces themselves. Rarely have I seen, if ever, so many warped control surfaces on a single plane. It is seriously hard to even imagine how these were stored or for how long prior to being installed so as to gain this shape, and I mean all of them, even the rudder has some slight warping. Now I'm not going to go crazy over this and try to straighten them out, some trim will be needed but it will be sorted out in the air and they should still work quite okay even so. I have been giving some thought as to why this plane is no longer for sale anywhere and I feel like at some point somebody found all of these forgotten in a warehouse somewhere after they've been sitting there heating up and down over the years and decided to make the most of it by actually putting them together and selling them off. Would explain the warped control surfaces and the fact that this was for sale for a limited time and and seems to have completely disappeared from everywhere, as if it was a limited run model only. But anyway, since this plane did not come with any electronics, I turned to my trusty Corona CS929 Metal Gear servos, used an MN4012-9480 kVT motor, though had to print out an extending mount for it since it was shorter than what was suggested for this plane and did not reach outside of the nose piece otherwise. Since it is also a good deal lower kV than what was suggested, I paired it with a 40 amp Hobbywing Platinum ESC and a 5S 5000 mAh our LiPo battery pack since it was the only one I had above 4S which would be able to fit in the battery bay without mods. Also added an old but reliable FRSky X8R ACCST receiver from before the days of access firmware when things were simpler. When I went to put all this together, I thought it would be a good idea to balance the 13 inch Genfan prop that came with the plane so it wouldn't vibrate itself off with the spinner and all once I gave it some throttle. Imagine my surprise when it turned out that the prop is insanely unbalanced, especially in the hub area. It literally took no less than two M3 12mm bolts with the largest heads I could find drilled into the side of the hub before it would balance properly. Then it 
it turned out that the bolts, of course, are getting in the way of assembling the spinner and skipping the nice scale look that the spinner would give was not an option in this case. So this prop was put aside to make room for a much better balanced out of the factory APC prop, which still needed a small M2.5 8mm bolt to balance the hub, but still nowhere near what the game fan needed. The resulting exceptionally quiet motor and prop operation was a testament to my Dubro balancer's ability to aid in sorting out unbalanced props. Also, the control horn elbow on one of the flaps lost its thread while I was moving it to the other side of the control horn due to wrong installation in the factory, so I had to use clevises instead, which required that I flip the servo on that wing so it would sit further from the flap, which in turn made it operate in the opposite direction to the other wing, hence acting like ailerons, not flaps. And since I only discovered that at the field, Maidenfly did not make use of the flaps, replacing the Y cable with two separate cables wired to two separate channels later on sorted that issue out since I was able to reverse its direction from the radio so the flaps would once more move together in the same direction. And so we get to the flight day and the moment it turned out that this plane will need 200 grams of lead weights in the nose to be even remotely considered balanced. Once the weights were in, it was go time. So full throttle and it barely got moving, so seems like 5S is still too little for this motor and the 12 by 8 APC prop I used to replace the game fan prop with. It felt and looked so anemic and yet, with a bit of struggle, it was able to get off the ground without crashing or stalling and actually flew. Once it picks up some speed, it actually does pretty well. Despite the warped control surfaces, I was impressed how little trim it needed to actually fly straight, and despite the lack of thrust, it was still able to gain altitude at a pretty decent rate if needed. Once trimmed, it tracked pretty good, and since I did not have any form of autopilot or stabilizer in this one, it was all the planes doing. Definitely looked pretty awesome in the air and flew very well. Tip stall tests revealed that it is not prone to tip stalling, or at the very least you would have to put a heck of an effort into it, if at all possible, to make it tip stall. Even with the 200 grams of lead weights in the nose, it still felt like it could use even more weight up front, but it did not exhibit any bad behavior, so I was happy. Funny thing is that no matter how long I held the throttle at full, the LiPo alarm would not go off, so I can only imagine how small the current roll must have been. But I was very happy with the sound of the prop, it was exceptionally quiet, meaning I had done a good job of balancing it, so at least I didn't have to worry or deal with vibration issues. I did not fly until the end of the battery because other people were waiting to use the airstrip, if you can call it that, but I did have my fun and I was pretty happy with the plane, looked awesome in the air and it could go slower if needed. I would imagine with the sorted out flaps it would be able to slow down even further for those flybys. So this was definitely fun and I definitely have been missing this good old line of sight no FPV flying unaided by modern electronics. Certainly was refreshing to get back to basics and especially with something scale and so good looking. There are a few more scale details which can be added but I didn't out of fear I would break them during transport or while wrestling with it to mount the battery. I do have a few more planes in mind that I want to fly without any FPV so hopefully those videos will also follow shortly. As for what the future holds for the Dornier, I guess you will have to wait and find out. What I know though is that I probably won't fly it at this location again or at least won't be landing on the dirt road since the landing gear didn't really like it. Was a bit rough and the plastic covers did develop some cracks and now don't sit as flush with the body as they used to, so hopefully in the future I can avoid causing further damage by making good use of the flaps and using a smoother surface to land on. But again, who knows where life will take this one. But until then, if you have enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing it and subscribing, and also consider using the super thanks option. Using any of the affiliate links in the description below to purchase anything from those websites will also go a long way towards supporting this channel at no additional cost to you. 
Yet another way you can support me is Patreon. The link is also there with the Buy Me A Coffee link right under it for those who prefer that method. I would like to express my eternal gratitude to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and would continue to do so. I wish you all successful flights and I will see you next time.